Excel accounting practice problem. Enter billable time and add to invoice transactions. Get ready because we're about to Excel. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. In prior presentations, we put together the Excel worksheet from a blank sheet. Now we're entering transactions into it. If you have access to it, there's two tabs on down below. The example tab and the practice tab. The practice tab starting out where we left off last time. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. We're going to be imagining billable type of items now. The first being similar to what you might expect to see in a law firm or CPA firm set up as a partnership where you have the staff and they're basically going to bill out the staff's time, work the staff to death, and then get the weekly billable sheets and then invoice basically the clients based on that system. We here imagine we're our guitar shop. So therefore, we're going to be billing out, for example, possibly the time that people service a guitar for. Later on, we'll do a similar system basically with guitar lessons. As we do this, however, we want to consider how this might work or be set up in basically accounting software to kind of automate some of these step software, such as like a QuickBooks. Let's go back to the practice tab here. And so we're going to do some, some startup stuff. Just to get our worksheet into working order, we're going to hide some cells. We've got all the cells unhidden. So we're going to go from the skinny all the way to A, A to the skinny. Right click and hide those cells. And then I'm going to copy the ending trial balance over here. Selecting those items and control C copy. Pasting that up front in A, F4. Right click, pasting it. One, two, three. And then I'm going to delete those ones in the middle. So we can just see the transactions taking place for this particular next step we'll be working on. So then we want to, I want to add our timesheet. So to add the timesheet, I'm going to put another worksheet all the way to the right hand side. We can imagine just putting the data input into a timesheet. Now some accounting software such as like a QuickBooks has basically a timesheet data input, which can be used to help you to process the payroll, which we talked about last time, and can also be used to help you to generate your billable time. You could use that system. You can also make, you imagine another system where you basically have your staff just basically write down their billable time that they are working and track it in that way, or you can use other, some, some other kind of system that's outside of your software system. So that's, that's how you can kind of link these things together. So we're going to put together our time. Let's ungreenify this cell over here. Before I do, I'm going to ungreenify that. And then I'm going to put some cells in between this one and our, our uh, financial. So I'm going to put my cursor on the skinny here and go on over to like F. Let's go a couple more. This one might be a little bit longer. And then I'm going to, going to let go, right click and insert. I'm going to remove the formatting. Let's get rid of the formatting right there. And then I'm going to reformat it the way I want to see it. I want my formatting here, custom format, format the cells. And then we're going to go to currency, brackets, no dollar sign, no decimals. And there we go. I'm going to say, okay, going to make the whole thing boldened. Then I want to make a skinny column over here. I'm going to copy this skinny to get the same width. Hit a little paintbrush and put, make that the skinny, another skinny. Okay, so this is going to be our timesheet. We're going to call it a timesheet. So I'll put that up top. And I'm going to say the first one is for Erica. This, and so that's the same as our employee. But I'm not using the timesheet to, to pay the employee. Possibly because oftentimes we might be using like a salaried employee that we're still billing out their time. So they still have to give us their timesheet so that we can bill it. We're going to use it for billable purposes, not in this case to generate the payroll. Although you can imagine in practice in an accounting software, you have the option of doing either one of those things oftentimes as you enter the time into say like a timesheet. So then I'm going to say that her rate, the rate that we're going to bill out is going to be 100. I'm going to make that a different color up top so that we can see that as kind of different than the header. So I'm going to, I'm going to make it a color like a, like a green like that. And then I'm going to make this black as the header. And then we're going to have the client. So client that we're going to be working on. And then I'm just going to have the, the days of the week, which is going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then the total. Look at that almost perfect on my columns that we pick. So let's make this a little bit larger on this side. I'll make this whole top thing just black and white for the header up top, making that black and white. 
and let's then center the days let's center these center that make them black and white make this black and white like so and then we're just going to enter our clients these are the people that that erica worked on she says she's worked on these this people's guitars sanded their guitars or put strings on the guitars or did guitar maintenance gave the guitar a tune-up i don't i don't know but then in quickbooks or if you're doing this like a accounting system you could then set up items items like the billable items we, we could see in invoices that you would see in an invoice and you could set up the billable item as simply billable hours for jones that that's what we're imagining here at the rate of 100 dollars you can also just set up the billable hours time as a generic thing by what you are doing, like sanding the guitar or tuning the guitar or whatever that you can then apply. We're going to imagine we basically set up billable time, her time being allocated at the $100. So then let's scroll down and say, okay, then that means that we're going to say that this is going to be, she worked eight hours on Friday, we're going to say, for Smith Guitars, that's the client. Actually, and then that was Jones Guitars, and then Smith Guitars. This should be an A. This, these are our clients. And she worked on Saturday, apparently, eight hours on Saturday. So we're going to bill those out to the client, summing this up. Let's sum it up this way. For this week, these are the billable time for our example purposes. And then we'll have the total here, total on down below summing up this way and copying across this way that's going to be our timesheet now be careful when you make these timesheets because you also have to kind of consider are you are you recording this in terms of hours meaning did i if i worked you know eight and a quarter hours is it going to be 8.25 or am i going to put this if i had the decimals here am i going to put this in terms of am i going to put this in terms of uh eight eight hours and 15 minutes right Just frame it in terms of minutes and, and you got that conversion of then trying to trying to multiply if you keep it at this format the decimal format it'll be easier to multiply times your rate up top if you if you have it as a time kind of format then you got the you know the 60 minutes and an hour you got to be careful with that conversion but we're just going to keep it at a, at a nice even eight here and i'm not even going to put the decimals on it and so we won't be dealing with the fractions at this point in time just to get an idea. So this, we can, again, see this timesheet. We might get this timesheet. I'm going to make it blue, like an outside, or we might have it inside like an accounting system like a QuickBooks. Let's put some underlines here. Let's put an underline right there. And then I'm going to delete this extra cell, this extra column. We don't need that column. Deleting that column. Okay. So now I'm going to I'm going to use this timesheet to record our journal entry. So I'd like to have the timesheet right next to my data input now. So I'm going to hide some cells. Going to put my cursor on FB and go all the way to the right till we get to our trial balance and hide everything in between. All the way over to here to the skinny. All the way to the skinny. Right click and hide all that stuff. So there we have it. So now we can record our timesheet on a side by side. But I need I need a little bit more room here. I feel like I feel like I need a little bit more room. I feel crowded down here. But maybe it's okay. Let's we can fit one more down here. So let's say we're going to just this would be an invoice kind of transaction, but there's there's no inventory involved. So it'd be an easy invoice with two accounts that we can fit right down here. Fit nice and cozy down here. I was I thought it I felt restricted but now I think now I feel like it's just a nice cozy perfect size space. So then the other side's just going to go to the service revenue and that's it that we're going to be billing out and we're going to be billing out it's going to be equal to the $100 times the 8 or 16 hours for this time frame. Actually we got we got to bill out two separate items for the two of them so times eight i am going to need more space and negative of that 800 so there's the first one that we are billing out to jones guitars for erica's work so then let's post this out we're going to go back up top and say okay accounts receivable is going to go up by the 800 dollars 
And then the other side is going to go to the service revenue, which is going to be down here. This is going to be equal to service revenue, increasing it. So there's our nice invoice. We don't have to deal with sales tax in this case. We're not dealing with inventory. Now we got the accounts receivable at the 13557. And we've got the this item at the 5980. We're also, now I'm actually not going to record the second half here for Smith because I'm going to add a little bit more complexity, which we'll do in the following presentation. We'll add another billable item to it in the following presentation, adding a bit more complexity. So we'll leave it just billing out for this point. We'll build out the first one that we sent out to Jones. And now let's add it to the GL and the sub ledger. So to do that, I'm going to unhide some cells up top. I'm going to put my cursor on AC going over to, to uh, AE, right click and unhide all those cells. Hold on a sec. That's not where it goes. I'm going to go all the way on this side from AF to FD, right click and unhide all those cells. Then we're going to post this out looking for the accounts receivable. That's the third account on the G to the L on the trial balance and also on the GL. So there it is, accounts receivable. We're in AR14. We're going to say this happened on 130. We're now in AS14 equals left to the wall, last transaction. We're picking up the AR, the 800 in the AR. So now we've got then the 12,757 up by the 800 to the 13,557. That 13,557 matching what's on the trustee trial balance out of balance now by the $800. Until we record the other side, which is going to the sales revenue. Here's the sales revenue. We're going to go all the way to the right to get to that sales revenue, assets, liabilities. We then have the equity, then the sales. So we're looking down here on BT18. This is going to be 130. We are now in BU18 equals left all the way to the wall. And then we will pick up that $800. So now we're going up from the 5180 up by 800 to the 8. 5980 that 5980 should match what's on the trial balance there it is here we're back in balance down below we increase net income of course by the $800 we're in balance on the GL as well we also need to record that $800 to the subsidiary ledger because we impacted the accounts receivable that's all the way to the right this was for Jones I believe jones guitars down here so we're going to be increasing the jones guitars on 130 so they owe us on ck19 equals all the way to the right again all the way to the right we're picking up that 800 dollars and enter so now jones owed us before the 4599 another 800 to the 5399 if we add up all of our clients that owe us money we're currently, they owe us uh, 13,557. That matches the trial balance indicated by the green zero, but let's double check it, 13,557. All the way over here, 13,557 ties out here as well. So next time, we'll add that other billable item for the time, and we will, we will also look at billable items from another standpoint that we might think about something that we had, that we had an expense that we want to include on the invoice and think about that in a few different formats entering it a few different ways thinking about how it might be done in software such as quickbooks or other accounting software too